Welcome to the recorded workshop session for the Accounting Distance Module. Is it on? I think, yeah. All right. So let's carry on. So we talk about accounting equation. All right. So the whole point of our first session was basically to deal with the elements of the accounting equation because we need to know first and foremost what those elements really are. All right? Now we take that a step further. We look at transactions, practical transactions. So now we are taking what we have learned and we are applying it in practical situations. All right, so in accounting, you're going to come across the T accounts. All right. So this is a T account. The left side is called the debit side. We use DR for debit. So the credit side is our right hand side. All right. So if you are sitting next to a friend and then you have studied this accounting, all right, you can say I'm referring my John is sitting on my debit side, and Johan is sitting on my credit side, all right? Left is debit, and right is credit, all right? So to make it easy for you to understand these T accounts, all right? We can say, all right, here we've got our assets, all right? I know you're already familiar with assets, all right? I don't want to bore you, so I'm not going to ask you what these assets are, all right? All right, so we've got another account. T account here. Yeah? Let's call this one expenses. You know what expenses are. So you know what expenses are. All right, and then we have the other one. So we call this one drawings. All right, so you know what drawings is. We said it's a proprietary account. You remember that? All right, so the common thing about these three accounts is that they all increase on the debit side. So they all increase. So use this sign to say they increase on the debit side. Expenses increase on the debit side. And drawings increase on the debit side. Assets decrease on the credit side. Expenses decrease on the credit side as well as drawings. All right, so that's why we put them all together because they've got similarities. All right, so the best way for you to remember is that they both increase on the debit and they both decrease on the credit. So these are, are the rules that we are going to apply, all right, and they relate to our accounting equation. We come this side. So here we can have liabilities. All right, and we will have income. And then we can have capital. All right, so your liabilities will increase on the credit side and they decrease on the debit. Your income increases on the credit, decreases on the debit. Your capital increases on the credit, decreases on the debit. So you can see the common features between these three. All right, so that's why the best way for you to remember 
how these accounts work is to put them in this manner because then you know that this follow the same direction and these three are actually for following the same direction all right so now we are going to use this in a practical situation and i'm going to show you how this actually works all right so in your workbook i will you 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 will notice that they have given you the column for the assets column for owner's equity and the column for liabilities so and then we're going to have to put amounts in those columns and those amounts are based on these rules and i'm going to show you the examples uh, so that you know how these are applied all right so let's just save this All right, so this is how our rules work. And then we just need to be careful. All right, when we start working with transactions, each transaction, when you deal with transaction and you want to apply those rules, you must remember one thing. Because with account equation, we says there must always be a balance on the left-hand side and the right-hand side. All right, so just between the equation sign, if you have 100 under assets, there must be either 100 under equity or liability. So the two sides must always balance. All right, we call this the double entry system. All right, we say for every debit, there is a credit. All right, so this is the balance. So your transaction always. So when you deal with transactions, When we apply accounting equation to transactions, all right, the most important thing we must note that each transaction will at a minimum have affect two items uh, and I'm going to show you how this works so each transaction will affect two 
accounts. So your duty, your responsibility is to be able to identify those accounts. All right. So that comes to your first step when you deal with transaction. Number one, identify the two accounts in a transaction. Right? And number two, once you have identified those two accounts, you need to determine whether they are those accounts are assets, equity, or liabilities. equity all right so that is the second step all right so we're gonna see how this actually works in practice number three you determine whether they in they are increasing or they are decreasing remember from here we said they, these, all these accounts can either increase or decrease. All right. So once we know what those accounts are, we must determine whether they are increasing or decreasing. All right. So our final step really is to determine whether they are increasing They are increasing or decreasing. All right. So the, they, I'm referring to your assets, equity, and liabilities. Let's just work out a practical example here. All right. So here's the example. All right, so the first example, let's say the owner contributes a capital of 150,000. So owner, Mr. Zungu, contributes capital of hundred thousand hundred and fifty thousand see this is a transaction that's what we call a transaction all right so I want us to first identify the accounts two accounts that are involved in this transaction all right two we're gonna determine whether we are dealing with assets equity or liabilities number three we are going to determine if they are increasing or decreasing. All right. So let's look at this scenario. All right. So they say the owner, Mr. Zungu, contributes capital of 150000 So you want to work out what the two accounts are. So from this, we can see that we are familiar with one account here, capital. Remember capital? We said it's an element of equity. So one account is capital, but where's the other one? Is it Mr. Zungu? <laughs> I doubt it's not Mr. Zungu. All right, I doubt very much. It can't be Mr. Zungu. All right, so what is this 150,000? Because that's the only thing remaining. All right? So that is cash. All right? And then we say in accounting, the cash, we call it bank. All right? So basically, these 150,000 is bank. So you see, we have 
done step number one. We have identified two accounts in a transaction. We have capital and then we have bank. So that's great, all right? So we want to determine whether these are assets, equity, and liabilities. All right, so what is capital? Remember that your capital is an equity. So here we are dealing with an equity. And what is our bank? We said our bank is a current asset. So your bank is an asset. So we are on step number two. We are fine. So we know what they are. We have an equity item and we have the asset account called bank. Now we are on step number three. We are determining if they are increasing or decreasing. All right, so let's think about it. So if the owner of the business contributes money into the business, is the cash for the business increasing or decreasing? So if the owner contributes money into the business, I will say, cash in the business is actually increasing all right so in other words we say our assets are increasing all right so let's go to really how all right so in other words what we are saying is that if the owner is contributing cash into the business so the business is receiving cash and cash in the business is increasing and it increases on the debit. All right. So we know that cash is increasing. What about owner's interest? All right. So if the owner contributes capital in the business, how will that affect owner's equity? You remember from the accounting equation we spoke about, we said capital increases owner's equity, drawings decreases owner's equity, Income increases owner's equity, and expenses decrease owner's equity. So, <coughs> so let's see how we put this. Sorry. So let's see how we put this on the accounting equation. All right. We've got assets equals to owner's equity plus liabilities. All right, so this is how your uh, workbook looks like, all right? So we need to know how we are going to put this transaction, and then we put it here. All right, so we have agreed that, okay, we have bank, and then we have capital, and we say if the owner contributes money, so the amount of cash in the business increases, all right? So, and then we said a bank is an asset. So then we come under asset and then we will say plus 150,000. All right? Because the assets in the business are increasing. And you remember from our first lesson that we said capital will actually increase owner's equity. So we'll come to owner's equity and say plus. 150,000, so we don't have liability. We put zero because we don't have liability in that transaction. Can you see that the law of accounting equation is working? Because we say all the time the left-hand side must always be equal to the right-hand side. All right, so if you ever come across a situation where one amount is negative, and the other is positive, you did not apply the accounting equation correctly. So you must always double check when you answer the question to make sure that both sides are actually balanced. All right, let's go to another example. All right, let's say, let's say the business purchases a computer for cash all right so purchase computer
for 50,000 in cash. All right. So remember our rules. Number one, we must find the two accounts. What are those two accounts? We can see that we are familiar with the computer. So that will be our asset. Do you remember that? And then what is the other one? All right. So it was bought for 50,000 in cash. And what is cash? Cash is bank. All right. So our second account is bank because our cash is bank. So we go to our step number two. Are these assets equity or liabilities? We remember that our bank is actually a current asset. So this is an asset. Computer. An asset as well. That's magical. Two assets. Wow. So we've got this one as an asset as well. So can we have two assets? Of course we can. And will this work on our county equation? Let's go and see. All right, let's think about it. So we are buying a computer for cash. So what's happening here? We take money out of the business. So you see our assets are decreasing, isn't it? Because the money is leaving the business. But where is the computer going? The, com the computer is actually coming into the business. So the computer increases our assets and the cash that is leaving the business decreases our assets. So let's see how it will work on that. So we bought it for how much? For 50,000. So a computer is coming into the business. We're going to say plus 50,000 because our computer is an asset. But cash, which is an asset, is leaving the business. We're going to say minus 50,000 because cash is also an asset. So here, there is no effect on equity and there is no effect on liability. Is our county equation working? Yes, it's working like magic because plus 50,000 and minus 50,000, 50, it's zero which is actually equal to the right-hand side. All right, so let's go to the next example. You see, the more examples we have, the easier it is to understand. All right, that's why we ask the question, are they assets, equity, and liabilities? Because if you don't know that they are assets, you can mistakenly put them under liabilities or under equity. Hence, the first lesson was very important to know what they really are. Okay, so let's come here. All right, so let's put a third example. All right, let's say the business sold goods. All right, on for cash. All right, let's stick around selling. We know the business can sell on credit. Let's stick around cash, all right, so that we, we transition easier. So the business sold goods for 3,500 in cash. All right, we need to first find our two accounts in a transaction. All right, so we already know by now that when we see cash, what account is involved? Bank! Yes, you catch very quickly. All right, so cash represents bank. So one account is sorted. So whenever you see cash, you must know bank is actually involved. Whenever you see sold, sales is involved. All right. So this is just giving itself away. When you see sold, you know that the account called sales is involved. When you see cash, you know that the account called bank is involved. So here we've got sales and bank all right so we come to step number two what are these all right so bank we already know it's an asset all right so bank is an asset and then we come to sales sales remember sales is an income all right and we said income belongs to equity 
Remember, four elements of equity is capital, its drawings, its income, and its expenses. So this is an income. So we know we've got sales and we've got cash there, which is an asset, and this is an income. So we are done with step number two. We want to find out if they are increasing or decreasing. Let's think about it. So when we sell goods, people are paying cash for those goods. So the business is actually, cash in the business is actually increasing, isn't it? So we know that our bank is an asset, so it is, our assets are increasing. But we said sales is an income. It is also increasing because when we sell, our income is increasing, isn't it? All right, so our income is increasing. So let's go to the accounting equation. All right, so we're going to say, all right, for how much? We sold that in cash. So because we are receiving money, our cash is increasing by 3,500. And then we set our sales, the income increases equity. All right, so our equity will then increase by 3,500, and we don't have liability. Does our accounting equation balance? Of course, it balances. It works like magic. All right. So this accounting equation stands the test of time. All right. So we go to... So these are just a few examples, and I'm going to add more examples. All right. Because the more examples we have, the deeper our understanding will be. So we are spending a bit more time on this because we said this is the foundation of accounting. If you get a hang of this, you are not going to have a problem. So let's go for more examples. All right, so let's say example number four. Paid 60,000. To settle an account... with the creditor. All right, so here you bought goods on credit as a business, and now you are paying 60000 to settle an account. All right, so two accounts involved, creditor pretty easy. We know that creditor is an account. All right, because remember, we are going through the first step. What two accounts are involved? So, in this instance, one is creditor, but we say if you pay cash, what account is involved? Bank. I'm so glad you, you have that one. So, the two accounts will be bank and creditor. All right, we go to the second step. We want to know if there are assets, equity, and liabilities. So, step number two, we say, okay, this will be bank. All right, we already know that bank is an asset, so no problem with that. But what is creditor? Do you still remember? It's a liability. It's a current liability. So this one is a liability. So here we've got an asset and we've got a liability. So now we want to determine whether they are decreasing or whether they are increasing. All right, let's come here. So if we pay... Money is leaving the business. So our asset, which is bank, is actually decreasing. And then, so the money is leaving us. So what's going to happen to the creditor? If you pay the creditor, do your liabilities increase or decrease? Just think about it. If you are owing someone 5000 and you actually pay them 5000 are your liabilities going up or down? They go down because you are owing nothing. So you see, your liability is decreasing because you have reduced, you have settled your account. The cash is also reducing because you have taken money out of the business. All right? So then we'll come here and say, we will say minus 60,000 because the cash is leaving our business but because we are settling our liabilities, all right? 
so our liabilities will also reduce. All right? Does our accounting work work? It works like magic. The sides are always equal. So that's why if you think through these transactions, they are just going to sort themselves out. All right. Let's just go for another one, for a different one. Let's say we are selling goods on credit to the customer. Okay? Sold goods on credit. to uh, the customer Mrs. Smith alright sold goods on credit our first step we must identify the two accounts involved in a transaction so we said, if you see the word sold, you must know that we're talking about the account called sales. By now, you remember that your sales is actually an income. And what's the other account? All right? So what do we call the person to whom we sell on credit? We call that person a debtor. All right? So if we sold to Miss Smith on credit, Miss Smith becomes our debtor. So here, the second account will be data. So we've gone through the first step. We know that two accounts are our sales and our data. All right? So we move to the second step. Are they assets, equity, or liabilities? All right? So let's come here. Sales, this one is equity. It's an income. All right? We know that is an income, but remember that income is an element of equity. All right, so this one will be equity. And then data, remember we said data is an example of a current asset. So data is an asset. So we are dealing with an equity and an asset. So the final step, are they increasing or decreasing? So we come back and we think about it. So, if we are selling to a debtor, what will happen to the balance of that data? Will it increase or will it go down? All right? So, if we are selling to a debtor, all right, let's just put an amount on credit for 10,000. Let's just say 10,000. All right? We sold on credit to 10,000. So what will happen to the balance of the data if we sell goods on credit to a data? So surely the balance of the data will increase. So there, an asset is increasing. So we come here and say under assets plus 10,000. So this is for our asset data, which is increasing. And then we say, okay, so if we are selling, so our, is our income increasing or decreasing? So our income is increasing, and we always know that the income actually increases our equity. So we come to the equity, and we say plus 10,000. And then there is no liability. So this works like magic. So the formula always works out. All right. So now that I've given you the examples, we can go to question 2.7. All right, so what we're going to do is we are just going to apply the same principles on the transactions that we have in our textbook. All right, so the textbook is actually asking us to put the transactions here, but it just wants us to work out the total of owner's equity. So let's look at our question. So this is our question. It says, so let's just read it to make sure that we understand. So when you're, when you're doing, you are in the assessment, all right, it's always important. So it's always important to make sure that you read your question carefully. All right, because if you understand the question, 
you are not going to have problems answering it. All right, very important. that you read your question carefully. All right. So the question is saying, calculate Ms. Putin's equity, all right, at the end of September by showing the effect of each individual transactions on the accounting equation. So hence, in your textbook, in your workbook, you have got assets column, equity column, and liabilities column. So we're going to do exactly what I've been showing you just now. And I'm sure you're going to give me answers like that because you're bright students. All right. So let's, let's deal with this one. All right. So let's deal with this one. All right. So we'll just deal with it one by one. All right. I'm just going to erase what we have here. And then we will deal with these transactions one by one. All right. So we'll just read a transaction and come here and sort it out on the accounting equation. All right, so what I was doing now was just giving you a basic approach regarding how to actually deal with these transactions. All right, so here we go. So let's look at the first transaction. So the first transaction... All right, so let's just have a look at it. So the first transaction is saying the owner, Mrs. Helena Putin, made a capital contribution of 75000 to her business. All right, I'm sure this one is already familiar. It's familiar to you. All right, so it says the owner, Mrs. Helena, made a capital contribution of 75000 to the business. All right, so let us go back to our steps. We have three steps. Number one, we said in a transaction, we must find the two accounts involved. All right, so we can see that we've got capital. That's one account. And then she contributed seventy. 5,000. And when we talk cash, we say the account will be bank. So our step, step number one is satisfied. We know we've got capital and we got bank. Number two, what are these? Are they assets, equity, or liabilities? So we already know that bank is an asset and capital is an element of equity. So we've got the asset and we've got equity. All right, we can already see that, okay, the bank will belong here on the assets and the capital will belong to equity. All right, so how do we sort it out? All right, we are going to go to a step further, to a step further, which is the last step, the third step, and ask ourselves what is, whether they are increasing or decreasing. All right. So we said that if the owner contributes cash in the business, the bank, which is an asset, will increase. All right? So that's why then we come under assets, and then we're going to say plus 75,000. All right? And then the other account is capital. All right? So if the owner contributes capital to the business, his capital in the business will increase. All right. So if you know that capital is a component of equity and you understand how this equation works, if you know very well that is, this is plus 75,000, you know that owner's equity cannot be negative. All right. You can already be saying plus 75,000 because my capital will increase owner's equity. All right, so you see how easy this is. All right, so accounting is not that difficult. All right, so let's go to the second transaction. So we are done with the first transaction. All right, let's just label them so that we don't lose track of them. All right, so it's very important when you are answering an exam, all right,
to make sure that you are able to label every transaction. It makes it easier for the examiner to mark. So let's look at the second one. All right, so this was just explaining how they made this transfer of 75,000. So this does, is not a transaction. It just explains how this 75,000 was transferred to the business. All right. So we go to the dates. So, okay, so they use the dates, so we will use the dates as well. So on the 5th, they purchased inventory on credit for 34,275. All right? So they purchased the inventory for 34,275. All right. Let's just see if they have told us something about inventory up there. All right. So there's just something I'm going to explain to you. All right. So they haven't. All right. So we know that we have bought inventory. All right. So let's go for this transaction. We know that the first step is to identify two accounts involved. All right. So what is the account? The first account that is clear to us. It's trading inventory. So in a transaction, there's always that account which is very easy for you to identify. It is inventory. All right. So if we buy inventory on credit, what do we call the person we are owing? We call that person creditor. All right. So we're going to have inventory and creditor. All right. Because we bought on credit from the creditor. So now we go to step number two. Are they assets, equity, or liabilities? So we know that creditor it's a liability. You remember that? And we know that inventory is an asset. The final step, are they increasing or are they decreasing? All right? So let's think about it. If you buy on credit, are your liabilities going up or going down? So they are definitely going up because you're going to have to pay your creditors. All right? So your liabilities are actually increasing. And then if you buy that inventory, then the supplier delivers the inventory to your own business. So your assets are going to increase because the inventory is coming into the business. So you can see that your assets are actually increasing. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to say on our accounting equation on the 5th, our assets will increase by how much? So you know that it's by 34,275. So it's going to be 34,275. And then because our liabilities are increasing, we're going to have 34,275. Then we don't have equity. So you see our county equation works out nicely. So let's go to the next one. All right, so the uh, third one is on the sixth. Sold merchandise. Remember, sold, a magical word. I said, if you see sold, know that the account we're dealing with is sales. All right, so sold, one account is sales. All right, so we sold the merchandise on credit. All right. The person to whom we sell on credit is called debtor. So the second account will be debtor. So debtor, all right? So our two accounts are sales and debtor. So second step, are they assets, equity, or liabilities? So that we, we know that our debtor is an asset, it's a current asset. And what is our sales? Income. And we said income is an element of equity. So our sales is an income which is an element of equity. And let's think about it. Does the balance of a debtor go up 
or go down when they buy on credit. It's going to go up because they are owing us more now. So our assets are going to increase. So you're going to come here and say on the 6th, our assets will increase by how much? 9,000. Nine thousand. All right, and then we set our other account is sales, which is an income, and the, our income actually increases our equity. All right, so we will come here and say plus nine thousand. All right, and there's no liabilities. All right. All right. So here they are. Just telling you that originally, all right, these goods that were bought, these goods were actually bought for 6,000, all right. For the purposes of our illustration, we're going to leave this out because when they bought this, it would have been put on the accounting equation originally, all right. Uh, so we can entertain things like this later. So my concern for now is you being able to put these transactions on the accounting equation, being able to go through the three steps and being comfortable with that. All right. So let's look at the next one. They say paid on the 7th, paid casual wages. Paid casual wages from PT Cash. All right. So... Wages, that's an account. Do you remember that? So we can clearly identify that. All right? So here we have cash, but this cash we have is PT cash. All right? So PT cash, it's not the amount that we have at the bank. So we can't call it bank. We are going to call it PT cash. It is still cash. We are just going to label as PT cash. All right? So we have two accounts. It's PT cash and wages. What is wages? Remember we said wages are expenses. So you're going to say wages are an expense. All right, and what about PT cash? So PT cash falls within the same category as bank, so it is an asset. All right, so we've got an equity, and then we've got an asset. The final step, are they increasing or decreasing? When we pay out cash, PT cash, so our asset is going to decrease because the cash is leaving us. All right, it's going to be a minus, and then we have got expenses. So we said income and expenses are elements of equity. While income increases equity, expenses decrease equity. So now what we're going to go to accounting equation and say our wages will decrease equity and our PT cash will actually be decreasing our asset. So you just have to double check the amount, it's 600. All right, so what it means is that our owner's equity will decrease by 600 because our expenses are decreasing equity. The cash is leaving us, so our assets will decrease by 600. There's no liabilities here. And then we just double check the date. Uh, the date is on the 7th. All right, so the date is on the 7th. So is our county equation waking out? Of course it is waking out because the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. So, so far, so good. All right, so on the 8th, all right, they say paid for repairs and maintenance by check. 2538. Alright? So there is an account that we can identify very quickly. You see, we have repairs and maintenance. And in fact, for you never to stress yourself about the account, if you are paying by cash, just ask yourself, for what am I paying? the answer will be your second account. All right, so if you are paying for cash, just ask yourself, what am I paying for? So in this case, you are paying for 
repairs and maintenance. Therefore, you're going to have bank as one account and repairs and maintenance as the other account. All right. So it does not check is as good as cash. All right. So when they say paid for cash or paid by check, check is cash, isn't it? All right. So here we're going to have repairs and maintenance and we're going to have bank. So we have repairs and maintenance. What is bank? By now, I'm sure you know. I'm sure you're like, okay, this is getting boring because I know bank, all right? What do you keep on asking me? So bank is an asset, all right? So we know that bank is an asset. Repairs and maintenance are our expenses. So we've got an asset, which is bank, and then we've got repairs and maintenance, which are our expenses. So we're asking ourselves, are they increasing or decreasing? So if we are paying out cash, our assets are decreasing because cash is leaving our business. So we will reduce our assets by 2538. So 2538 will reduce our assets. And then what is the other account? We said the other account is repairs and maintenance. And these are expenses. And we say expenses are opposite to income. While income increase our equity, our expenses will decrease our equity. So we come to our equity and we will say minus 2538. All right, so just double check the date there and then it's on the 8th. So we very important to always put our date there. Then we have liability. Is our account equation working out? Of course it does. All right, let's move on to the next one. Issued a check for 1845 to pay for water and electricity. All right, we know that if, if they say issued check, it's as good as paid by check, all right? And if we pay, we know that if we pay check or cash, we have bank. And then we ask ourselves, what am I paying for? Water and electricity. Then you've got the other account. So you've got water and electricity and bank. All right, bank, you already know it's an asset and you already know that water and electricity will be your expenses. So you've got a similar scenario to the one you have above here. So what you're going to do, you are going to say, all right, because I am paying, so my assets are going to decrease by 1845, and my expenses decrease equity, all right, by 1845. All right, so let's look at uh, the date there. It's the 13th. All right, just put our date nicely. 13th, so our accounting equation is working so far. All right, so let's go to the next one. So on the 16th, they say purchased a computer for the office on credit. All right. So, what did you buy? You bought a computer. So, that's your one account. All right. How did you buy it? On credit. If you buy on credit, the person you are buying this computer on credit from is called creditor. So, you're going to have computer and creditor. All right. So, see, you remember that a creditor is a liability. All right. So, you're going to have a liability here. So we have two accounts, it's computer and creditor. And you remember that a computer is a non-current asset. You can use it for more than a year, so we know it's an asset. So we are dealing with a computer, which is an asset, and the creditor, which is a liability. So we ask ourselves, what's decreasing or what, what, what is increasing and what is decreasing? If you buy a computer, it means that the computer is coming into your business, so your assets are actually increasing. All right? So you're going to go to our assets and increase them. So you're going to say our assets are increasing by 21,930. All right? Then we just ask ourselves, how are we buying this? 
right? We see that, okay, we are buying this on credit. We've got a liability. Now we ask ourselves, if we are buying on credit, what happens to our liabilities? Are they going up or they are going down? They're going to go up because we're going to owe the supplier 21000 930 so we come to the liabilities column and we say liabilities will increase by 21,930 and we will not have equity all right so what is the date for that the date for that is the 16th so we put our date there the 16th is our county equation working out of course it's working out all right so I can see you, you beginning to say, this is just too easy, all right? I'm so bored now, all right? But just endure, all right? Just, just endure, all right? We are going to, we're getting there, all right? The destination is not so far, all right? So there, on, on the 17th, we say purchased office refreshments by check, all right? So if we buy anything by check, what is the account? Bank. All right, what am I paying for? Office refreshments, all right. And then we know that our office refreshments are actually expenses. So we've got office refreshments, which are expenses, and we already know something about expenses now. They decrease owner's equity. So we can already go to owner's equity and say our date on the 17th, owner's equity will actually decrease by how much is going to decrease by 4,500 all right but because we have used cash to buy the this refreshments it means our assets are decreasing by 4,500 all right so works like magic so we're done with that all right, so we go to the next one. Purchased packing materials. All right, so here we are buying packing materials on credit. So when we buy, so you can already see, when we buy on credit, credit is always affected. When we buy for cash, bank is always affected. So here we are buying on credit. So... Credit is affected. When we sell on credit, data is affected. All right. When we sell on credit, data affected. When we buy on credit, credit are affected. So here we're going to have credit and the packing material. All right. So we just have to work out which one is what. What is what. All right. So we look at our assets, equity, and liabilities. What is our creditor? We know our creditor by now that it's a liability. And our packing materials will be our expenses. All right. So, for the first time now, we don't have assets. That's different. Eh? That's actually quite different. All right. So, we know that packing materials are our expenses. And they decrease our equity. So, we're going to go to our equity and say on the 19th, our equity will actually decrease, because our expenses decrease equity by 1365. All right? But if we are buying packing material on credit, our liabilities are increasing. All right? Because we are we're going to have to pay our creditor. Then we have plus... One, three, six, five. Is our account equation still working? Yes, it's still working because it's plus one, three, six, five for liabilities and minus one, three, six, five for equity. That makes it zero and both sides are actually balancing. All right. So let's go to the next one. So now we are on the 24th. All right. So they say purchased fuel for the delivery vehicle from PT Cash. So what did you buy? You bought fuel. And then what did you use? PT Cash. So these are our two accounts. So it's PT Cash and fuel. 
What is petty cash? We said it's an asset. Petty cash is an asset. Fuel, it's our expense. All right. And what did we say about our expenses? They decrease equity. So you're going to come here and say on the 19th, on the 25th, on the 24th rather, all right, on the 24th, we had to get fuel, all right, for how much? 450. So you're going to say under our owner's equity, 450 minus, all right, we used the cash, which is our asset, we're going to have minus 450, all right? So the liabilities, there's nothing. So our accounting equation is actually balancing, all right? So we just are going to move on. All right, all right, we move on. So we're just about to wrap up, all right? We are on the 24th. We are going to the 30th. So our journey is about to come to an end. All right, so let's, let's look on the 25th. Sold trading goods for 4,500, all right? And they say the goods were originally bought for 3,000, all right? So that will be part of what I'll be discussing with you in the future. Today, our mission is one. We want to know how to put the transactions on the accounting equation. All right. So say we sold trading goods for 4,500 cash. When you see sold, the word sold, that's sales, which is an income. You see the word cash, that's bank. So you've got bank and sales. So if we are selling for cash, so money is coming into our business, so our asset, which is bank, is increasing. All right, so we're going to say under assets, on the 25th, plus 4,500, okay? But we said our sales are increasing our equity because our sales is an income and income increases equity we're going to say 4500 and there is no liability for that okay so we go to the next one all right so we're just gonna go to the next one so i just want us to to be able to see it clearly okay so here we go so, on the 25th, on the 26th, rather, they say, Miss Putin took a couch from stock for her personal use. All right. Remember personal use. All right. So what did we say about personal use? All right. Just, just, let me, just allow me to erase a little bit so that our board is not cluttered. All right. Just going to make it easier for ourselves so that we can all be able to see. All right. So I hope you are catching all this. All right, because this is the foundation. You're going to have less problems in accounting if you understand this. All right, so let's look at our transaction. All right. Miss Putin took a couch from stock for her personal use. We spoke greatly about something to do with personal use. We said, if the owner takes something from the business for personal use, we say that account will be drawings. All right. So we know what that account is. So that is drawings. So we know our first account. You see, that personal use keyword is helping us. All right. Then to get the account, other account, we just ask ourselves, what did he take from the business? He took the stock, all right? And that is our inventory, all right? So we have two accounts. We've got inventory and we've got drawings, all right? So 
our inventory and drawings, and we know that, okay, it's worth uh, 12,000. All right, so what we're going to do is uh, we're asking ourselves what is increasing and what is decreasing. All right, so if the owner takes inventory from the business, so we know that inventory is an asset, so our assets are going to reduce because the inventory is leaving us. All right, so we're going to go to our accounting equation and say on the 26th, all right, on the 26th, our assets will decrease by, so they're going to decrease uh, by 12,000, if I remember. Yeah, 12,000. Okay, so you're going to decrease by 12,000. What did we say about drawings? How, how does it affect equity? We said capital increases equity, drawings decreases equity because we're taking something out. So you're going to say minus 12,000 in equity and we'll have plus zero. All right? And let's go to our last transaction. All right? So they say, received a check for 3000 from a debtor in part payment of her account. So the debtor is now paying us. All right? So if we see the word check, received a check, it tells us we got cash. So that's our bank. All right? And who's paying us? The debtor is paying us. So we've got two accounts, which is our bank and our debtor. So we just have to work out which one is increasing and which one is decreasing. As you can already see, bank is an asset and a debtor is an asset. So we've got two assets now. But we just want to work out which one is increasing and which one is decreasing. So if we receive cash, our bank is going to increase because we've got more cash. All right? So we are going to say, all right, we are getting more cash. So we're going to say plus how much? 3,000. So that's what we got, 3,000. And then we go back to our data and ask ourselves, what happens to the balance of the data if they settle the account? Will the balance of the data go up or down if they settle in the account? So it's going to go down. So our data then will be minus 3,000. And then we don't have equity. We don't have liability. Is our county equation working out? Of course it is working out because we've got plus 3,000 and minus 3,000. All right. So this is really how we plot our transactions on the account equation. You see, it is very important for you to understand what an asset is, equity is, and liability is. All right? If you understand that, then putting the transactions on the account equation becomes very, very easy. You just have, work, you just have to work out if it's increasing or decreasing. All right. So let's just go and just double check what the question is asking us to do. So the question is, is saying calculate Mrs. Putin's equity in the business. So what this question is actually saying is that give us the total of equity on the account equation. So when you have put all these transactions, you are just going to add and subtract all the equations under equity. So you're going to, so what, the one which is positive, you say plus. The one which is minus, you just add and subtract. And then the total that you get under equity is the total that they are looking for. I'm sure you can be able to do that. It's pretty easy. Just add and subtract using your calculator. So that's why it's very important for you to understand whether an amount is a minus or a plus. All right. Because if you don't know whether it's a plus or a minus, your total is going to be wrong here. All right. So let's just look at what the question, what question two uh, actually required us to do. All right. So let's, let's just check what it actually required us to do. All right. Just erase it. Make sure that 
it's looking good. All right, so it's all good. So they're saying capital and drawings are referred to as proprietary accounts. We, we, all, we already are familiar with that. So the transactions are included in the calculation of owner's equity, but not in the calculation of profits. Taking this fact into consideration, calculate profit or loss derived by Putin. All right. So they say calculate profit or loss derived by Putin. All right. So the key word here is profit and profit or loss. All right. So this I'm going to teach you more about the profit or to teach you um, about profit or loss. All right. We're going to do that, but I just want you to understand what profit or loss actually means. All right, so how do we determine our profit or a loss? All right, if you are a business person, surely you want to make sure that you make a profit because if you're making a loss, your business is not going to last. All right, you're going to have to shut down. All right, so your profit happens. So let's just say a profit or loss. What is this? Is the difference between income and expenses. All right, so this is the difference between income and expenses. Right, so it's the difference between income and expenses. That's so when we talk about profit or loss, we're not including drawings and capital. All right, so we are just talking about your income and expenses. You remember when we first started, we spoke about income that it will be things like your your sales, your rental income. They are your income. Your expenses will be your salaries, your and wages, your rates and taxes, etc. When does the profit happen? So we have a profit when income is greater than expenses. So when your income exceeds your expenses, the difference is your profit. When do you have a loss? You've got a loss when your income is lesser than your expenses. Than your expenses. All right. So we will deal with the sections that actually help you determine your profit or loss um, without any difficulties. But in this case, if you were to deal with, if you were to answer this question on profit or loss, all you will need to do will be to go through your transactions all right, so you just need to go through your transactions and then you go to your equity column. Because remember, we said your income and expenses are components of equity. So you just look at every transaction to see if you had income and expenses. So if you look at transaction number one, we didn't have income and expense because we had capital. All right, so your first transaction did not affect expense or income. All right, so what about the second one? So the second one affected your inventory and your creditor. It didn't affect your income or exp expenses. Sold merchandise, we said sold is sales. So your third transaction will actually affect your profit because there is income involved. All right, seven, wages is an expense. So you'll actually have, so if you were to do a calculation uh, without understanding too much about profit and loss, you'll say here, I've got an income of 9,000, which is a plus. And then you go to the next one. Here I've got an expense called wages. So expenses are a minus. So I'll have wages, 
600 minus. So you move on to the next transaction. Repairs and maintenance are expenses. So your expenses are a minus. You'll say 2538 minus. On the 13th, water and electricity is an expense. You'll say 1845 minus. You go to the 16th, your computer is not an expense, it's an asset. So you're going to leave that one. Packing material, your expenses. So you're going to say 1365 minus. Fuel is an expense. All right, so an expense, you say 450 minus. Sold, that's an, that's an income. So the income is coming to your business. You will say 4,500 minus. So 4,500 minus. Here, you had drawings. So drawings is not income. And a, the, drawings is a proprietary account. All right, it will go hand in hand with capital. So here your expenses are not affected or income. So received a check from a debtor for, for payment. Here we said it's bank and debtor. Bank and debtor are not income and expense items. So you see from here you basically are taking, so the sales will be an income, so it will be a plus. All right, so 4,500 will be your sales and it's a plus. So all you do to work out your profit, you group your income items together. Your sales, you put them together, and then you minus your expenses. All right, so let's just practically calculate using these amounts and see if we can uh, get our total. All right, so let's just uh, try to use our calculator here. All right, so let's just see if we can use our calculator here. All right, but in any case, this is not a big deal. I'm sure you can do that for yourself because all that you need to do is take all your income items, add them together, and you subtract all, that, all the expenses, and if your total is positive, all right? If you add your income and you minus these expenses, you get a positive number, that is profit. If you take the income items and you subtract the expenses, you get a negative number, that's your loss because it will mean that your expenses are exceeding your income, all right? So that's really what it's all about, but we're going to get into that in more detail for Today, the mission was one. Firstly, understand what the accounting equation elements are. Two, take the transactions and plug them on the accounting equation. If you can do that, I'm pretty satisfied that you have got a solid foundation on which to build. All right, remember, if you don't understand any of this, you can contact me on 072-610-6621. All right? It's 072-610-6621. All right? Let's just take a break, and then we will just proceed with our subsidiary journals. Thank you very much.